<laughs> Actually, used to be a DJ in college. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it was fun. We used to have a show called the Beth and Mo Show, and my radio show partner was this lady named Beth, who now is a, a professor of divinity. Professor. <laughs> okay. Is it working, Julie? Okay. Well, on Google Hangout here, it says on air up on the top, as far as I see. I hear you. I think everybody. Oh. <clears throat> oh, great. Hey, welcome to you. Yeah, Julie says it's not showing right now on the YouTube channel. It's not showing on Google Plus yet either. Okay, let's give it another minute for. Why do we have total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, actually, I think we've we got, we got the full. Well, we had, oh, and Richard! Yep. And we had Jen as well, but then I don't know if she had video troubles or something. Yeah, I was showing the bug. Came in and then. So Richard's uh, still coming in, it looks like. Is it showing, Julie? It says one viewer. Is that you, Julie? You got it? Can you can you Google chat it to me or to Justin? Okay, she's sending over the link right now. All right. Oh, she sent to me. I'll, I'll forward it to you, Justin. Okay. Or... Bouncing around all over the place. There we go. You get it? Yes. Perfect. So if you post that on there, we can, we can go ahead and get started. Aria, did you figure out the lower third app yet, or is it still? Not yet. How That's okay. That? So it, uh, there should be something. Let me see. I should try it's on the out. left side. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's on the left side. The left what side, the third or fourth icon down, is the way I found it on the screen. Exactly. The lower third. Just click on that. Yep. And then on the right, you got to turn it on, put your name in, and turn it on. Exactly. Well said. Allow access. Okay. Whoa. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Her feed that makes sense. is Thanks. linked now. Excellent. Cool. Well, thank you all for coming. <laughs> Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. So just now we were talking earlier today, we were thinking what we do is basically just go through and have everybody just say like a little bit about who you are, what you like about the class, and if you have any questions, you know, either for Justin and me or for each other. So why don't we start with Aria? How about you start? Um, I am originally from the Philippines, but I am teaching a, at a juvenile correction center. I am not in the class, but my students are. They're in Idaho. They right? <laughs> well, they have limited access to internet with their current situation, but I do. Ev I I download a video. They watch it. Loved it. That's great. So, you're, that's amazing. So, are you in Idaho? Is that right? I thought I remember seeing that on your Google Plus correct. profile. Excellent. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> Cool. So, uh, what what do they think so far? They uh, do they have any any thoughts or any suggestions? They or... can't wait to go out. Yeah. <laughs> they can't That's wait great. To go out. I told them to straighten your life and then go ahead and do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's but great. I I am in the process of convincing my principal and everyone else that this is a good program. We have got to get it on board. Yeah, it really that's is. True. Yeah. My that's true. students. My students feel connected to the outside world. That's they great. Love it. Well, what's the age range of your students? They're between 16 to 20 years old. 16 to 20. Excellent. So some of my students are high school graduate, mm -hmm. and I am a high school teacher. I don't have anything beyond high school. Mm -hmm. This is perfect for That's them. Great. That's great. That's great. And the level is okay too. They're not. They're not like feeling just lost or anything like that with the material. The level is uh, the level is yeah, acceptable. So, okay. it, it's enough to challenge them. That's great. Cool. Do you have any questions for either us or for the other folks on the on the in the group here? Uh, I, I would like to hear where where everybody else is from and their background. Okay. Well, let's let's rotate through. The next one on my list here is uh, Kelly. Kelly Wright. Hi. Hi, um, I'm Kelly, and I'm enrolled as well as my son. Uh, I'm a homeschool mother. I also work part time from home, but I homeschool my son, and uh, it can be kind of difficult to find good homeschool science materials that cover evolution. So that's why we 
uh, enrolled in this class. We want to get a proper <laughs> so so far so good. Excellent. It. Where do you live? What part of the what part of the country? Oh, um, Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis. Excellent. Excellent. Indianapolis. Cool. Do you have any questions for uh, Justin or me or any of the other people? Well, sure. Either one, either you or Justin. Uh, what do you know? What the long term plans are for Coursera? I mean, is are you going to be offering this course sort of every year, or is this sort of in the experimental phase right now? So that's that's a great question. I, I can't answer it in terms of Coursera in general, but for our class, we already have it slated right now to start again January fourth. So it'll be basically exactly the same material coming again, but you know, a couple of little you know modifications. You guys have been the very first group, so we definitely appreciate all the feedback you guys have provided. A lot of great thank you. A lot of great links. I've been stealing t tons of your links from the yeah. discussion forum. Like, oh, we got to save this. This will be great. <laughs> but and we for sure, love it. We love yeah, it. We're sure for sure going to offer it in June. My, or I'm sorry, not June, January. Um, I don't know. Oh, Julie, I stepped out. I don't know if uh, it would be then two times a year or possibly even three. But I mean, it would conceivably be possible to do it. You know, spring, summer, and fall, or something like that. The one thing I don't know is uh, right now we have tons of help thanks to the amazing Justin who's on here. Thanks, Justin. He is amazing. <laughs> thanks, Justin. <laughs> but That's you know the, the the university has not yet committed to that much to that level of support. So that will adjust basically how often we can do it. That you know if they are willing to commit you know to have somebody on board to help uh, you know throughout the year, then sure we can do it all the time. If they're going to sort of minimalist it, then we'll probably have to do it just maybe once or twice a year, and that's it after that. So. Okay. Do you have anything to add to that? How well the students do? Like, no. are, they, are the university keeping track of like how many people actually finish the whole course or how well they do? That's a great question. Um, definitely are keeping track of it, but I don't think that's going to be particularly. I mean, if it ended up dropping to really low numbers, then there might be some concern on that. But I don't think that's going to be the basis on which it either does or doesn't continue. I think it's going to be much more a financial question. <laughs> oh, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything to add to my answer, Justin? Or? No, I agree. I mean, I think some people have talked about in the discussion forums how. Of course, there, of course, it's free right now, but there's been some comments along the lines of what they'll do in the future to to pay for all this material. Like they have to end up making some kind of money, if nothing else, to help support the infrastructure that they're putting up. So there will probably be some some price involved somewhere along the way. How they end up doing that, I think, is still up in the air. That's great. But right now, it seems like every university is shouldering the financial cost for the most wow. part. Well, okay. so Leo, why don't we go to you for a minute? Hi, um, hi everyone. So hi. I'm also a Filipino, and I'm right now an Erasmus student in Italy. So currently, oh, I'm taking um, medicine as my undergraduate. Well, mm -hmm. technically, a pre-medical course. Okay. And doing, I'm doing laboratory, and I find a very, I find the, the course, very interesting, and I've always tried, I've always tried to follow all the courses and answered all the quizzes. Although I would like to ask how much, I mean, yeah, is it regarding the future of Coursera, I mean, how, how, how is, how are the teachers able to like follow everyone in the course? <laughs> That's a great Despite question. the number, of, I mean, despite, I mean, I've heard that. Almost four thousand students like enroll in the class, and then it's such it's just so many students to follow. Yeah, so that's a great yeah. question. So there, there's actually in terms of just the numbers that are enrolled, there's about thirty-two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so it's huge. Now, Justin, by a better idea, what, how many are actively doing quizzes and things like that right now? I think the number that actually submitted the last quiz was just under six thousand. Yeah, so that, so that so the number you gave was more the the actively involved in terms of the quiz. Though there are some people who are just watching the videos and they're just mm -hmm. you know clicking through there and just seeing what's happening, things like that. That would be me. Yeah, that's why. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> wrong with that at all. <laughs> My students are one of those six thousand. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so I mean, we don't. We, of course, we're not monitoring individual people in that regard. Like we're not pulling up, you know, how is Leo doing or something like that. 
But I mean, the thing that, that Justin does a lot and Colin does a lot, and I do some, is uh, looking at the discussion forums and trying to, you know, just basically make sure that, that when there's a question that comes up, is it headed in the right direction? Sometimes it comes up, and even before we even see it, you know, 14 people have already answered it. <laughs> so that, that's yeah. wonderful when that happens. <laughs> but we especially try to make sure there's not a long thread that's going in a, in a direction where, like, oh, that's not really right, and try to you know, bring it back to the right answer as much as possible. Does that All answer right. your question? Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Okay. Well, let's move on to Naresh. Yes, of course. Uh, Naresh Ramesh from India, uh, Chennai. So uh, basically, I'm biotechnology, bachelor's in biotechnology. Uh, I'm, currently, I'm currently pursuing research in drug resistance. Uh, so this is an extension for my uh, studies uh, through Coursera. So uh, it was an amazing class by professor. And uh, it, with this regard, I have a question to ask uh, the professor. Uh, is the, uh, you have an, a course content now, uh, the genetics and evolution course content now. Uh, we, we can, can we expect an extension to this course? Uh, like some course in Coursera, I see there's a part one, part two, something like that. So you have a part two for this course here in Duke University. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, I, that's a good question. So right now, I don't have any plans of doing a new course in Coursera. Now, Coursera yes. itself is going to be offering several other classes. Like right now, there is the I think it's called something like experimental genome science class or something like that, which is yeah. you know, obviously related to what we're doing. But I think it's offered at a significantly higher level. There's also something which I wasn't particularly pleased with the name of it that's coming out in uh, May, I think it's called. It's called Useful Genetics. Useful I didn't, I didn't yeah, like it just I as a contrast to my class. Oh, like, oh, so mine's not useful genetics, I guess, or something like that. But I think, I think that was done just completely independently of my class. I don't think that had any direct <laughs> connection to that. But as of right now, I'm not planning on doing another one anytime in the near future. But I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe, certainly not, certainly not in, in the next year, because the, this involved many months. Preparation, <laughs> but yeah. possibly thereafter, yeah. though. <laughs> yes, of course, because uh, yeah, just from the course content, I can see that this has been more like this a year of preparation ahead of uh, because given the quality of the presentations or the course, I think there's almost a year of work behind this. So that's actually, cheers it, to you guys, actually. It, it seems like that, but that's a credit to Justin. <laughs> yes, of course, of course, of course. Yes. So Justin yes. actually started. Justin actually started mid-August on this project, yes. and um, well, I think okay. at that point I had only recorded the very first video, and that was it. Yeah. So <laughs> amazing. It's the credit to him. Yes, uh, yes, of course. It's, it's starting in the mid-August, and this quality of work, I think, Justin, you're just amazing. It, it helps to be able to have forty hours spent on it. So. Yeah. Uh, it makes a difference. <laughs> so let's let's move on and talk to Richard. Hello. Good hey. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good evening. Actually, Richard, before you say anything, actually, I have to thank you. Your posts are amazing. You're one of them. Say something about uh, people often answer the questions before we come back. It's very often Richard here who's answered the the forum post with a very elaborate, very detailed answer. Thank, thank you. you. You made my job easier. <laughs> Well, I'm the non-academic, I think. Um, I'm a train driver from Sheffield in England, and uh, I, I love science, and uh, always have done, and always read stuff. So whatever I've picked up, usually through books, never through uh, my academic uh, endeavours at school, because uh, unfortunately I kind of didn't do very well on that. <laughs> You're certainly more than made up for it now. <laughs> But it's, it's great, it's fantastic, brilliant course. Uh, you know, to get something like this without paying anything, it's just fantastic, brilliant, marvelous, absolutely yeah. fantastic. Well, we're loving it too, that's great. So tell us a little bit more about your background. You mentioned you were a train driver? Yeah, I'm a freight train driver in England, mostly taking coal from uh, ports and into power stations. And uh, you, get, you, you might be sat somewhere three or four hours, in which case I get a book out and read a book. and. Usually on science. Oh, that's great. Science, so. So when do you find time to watch the lectures? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, today I watched some. Um, I did. Um, I were off. I got a short job on Thursday, so I watched them then. I and, see. Uh, went through quizzes a couple of times. What I, what I do is uh, I look at the quiz first, mm -hmm. and then that sort of gives me a key as to what I should be watching. Taking more note of individuals. <laughs> that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Good idea, actually. That pedagogically, that does make sense. Excellent. Well, thanks for all you've done. Did you, Thanks. Yeah. Did you have any questions for us? 
Uh, no, really. Um, uh, everything's been answered on, on the uh, either on the videos or or in the forum. I mean, the for the forum's magic, brilliant. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks. Okay, let's move on to Sarah. Hi. Hello, Hi. everyone. Hello. Um, hey, um, so I'm actually originally from Poland, um, but I've been living in England for about eight years now. Um, and I've always loved science, but somehow I ended up actually doing graphic design. Oh, <laughs> so I've been doing that for a few years now. Um, and I've started slowly missing, kind of, uh, you know, actually doing something that requires a little bit more thinking. Uh, process to it, so, um, so sometimes books just aren't enough, really. Um, so no, the course has been really great, and I'm doing it for a couple of hours pretty much per day, um, just doing a couple of lectures per day whenever I can after work, mm -hmm. um, and I might be doing maybe another bachelor's in a couple of years, um, maybe in bioscience. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a really good prep work, and um, I mean, just the fact that you know we're all actually here together right now in the evening. That's you know, um, that's really amazing. Yeah, um, evening, evening for some, morning for others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's only one o'clock in the morning here. Oh my god! <laughs> it's also on the block here. <laughs> it was worth waiting for. Yeah, um, yes, exactly. So, yeah. um, I think my question is, how are you finding the format? Because um, I mean, for me, this is pretty much the first time I'm actually studying something online. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously, you've been doing this for quite a while, as in actually, you know, be, being a lecturer. I mean, so, oh, well, I see, I see. Um, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, this is the first time you kind of don't have, you know, instant feedback from someone. Oh, no. Actually, it's, it's interesting. It almost feels like I have more feedback now. Oh, we have we have another visitor there with our Aria. <laughs> we'll come back to you in just a second. The net is right here, huh? Hello. Hello. Interesting. So you asked about the hello. <laughs> you asked about the feedback. The um. If anything, I actually feel like it's almost more instantaneous with this format because, especially when you go to the discussion forums, you know, I literally just have it running in the background of my computer, which I'm on my computer most of the day anyway. And just you know, every you know half hour, hour, I just hit refresh. And there's a bunch of new posts. I just go and, run <laughs> and see what's there. So there's actually a surprisingly large amount of feedback relative to my class. Now, actually, my class is not particularly small. So when I give the when I give these same lectures. In uh, at Duke, and it's typically the spring semester. The enrollment to last semester was 411, so it wasn't exactly a small group. <laughs> but um, what happened there is I'd give the lecture in class, and then I'd walk through the lab sections. But the lab sections, my wife who will come by and say hi in just a moment. She actually she actually manages all of them. But there's 28 different lab sections over the course of the week. So <laughs> there's opportunity there to see the students pretty regularly. The one thing I miss from this format is this opportunity to do something like what we're doing right now, where I can actually talk to people interactively rather than yeah. just seeing like a post and yeah. see uh, what do you exactly. think. Exactly. Yeah. And and it's great hearing feedback. So actually, one thing I was going to ask you, based on what you were just saying about, because you mentioned you were spending a couple hours a day on it. How do you feel about the workload? I mean, does it seem you know? I'm okay, but I, but I think it's because um, I used to really enjoy science in school, and I still remember quite a few things. Um, but I think it might be a little bit different if you come totally fresh from it and not having any kind of background. Um, but um, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, great. it's not that difficult. I mean, it's really, really challenging, especially yeah. up there about yeah the second lecture. This is when it gets a little bit more tricky. Yeah, um, that's, 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 that's what really you know. makes it fun. You know, that's what makes it fun, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My kids really love it, especially the videos in week one and two. They thought it was easy, so it gave them enough motivation that, you know what, I can do this. That's great. And then it got a little bit harder, yep. which <laughs> started challenging them. Mm -hmm. So they're still alive, so I think it's great. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I'm glad you're... What's your daughter's name? Leia. Her name is Leia. Hi, Leia. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I, th I think we did plan the first week to be more of a hook, kind of a week. Exactly. It hooked both good and bad things, but it was, <laughs> it was to engage everybody and hopefully motivate people to stay in, well, uh, yep. and see it, some more. It hooked my student. Yep. Yeah. That's great. Let's move on to Stephen from Albuquerque. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Hi, Stephen. Um, hi. Um, I had an interest in uh, subjects of evolution for many, many years, um, and so when I had the opportunity, well, I've just recently been um, studying on my own genetics all over the internet, wherever I could find, and then I ran into the Coursera courses and saw this course, and it's w really great to be able to uh, take the course more in an organized format 
and uh, kind of clarifies. Well, it also raises a lot of questions. I, I, I find myself doing a lot of additional research based on things that, that, that are mentioned that maybe I don't understand well, and I go out mm -hmm. and research those. But it's really a nice course. That's great. What are some of the what are some of the the sites that you use for additional research on it? Um, there's a link, and I don't have it on in front of me right now, but it's um, and you'll probably remember better. Uh, it's the uh, oh, can't remember the name of, it, but it, what, which is the person that's still alive of Crick and Watson? That and he had there's a site there, and it has like uh, around sixty different uh, levels. It's like the whole history. Of genetics, okay. and lots, lots and uh, and it has um, you know the the summary the the lives of the scientists. Mm -hmm. It has um, what the you know explaining their experiments, mm -hmm. and it also has like little quizzes online too. There there are different tabs, and I'd be glad to post the link that I don't have it with me right this moment. Yeah, please. But, I, actually, I'm not sure what that one is. I'd be interested to know. Do yeah, know it's, it's uh, would be good prep. I'm not sure either. I think I saw something that was either Crick or Watson. But I, I don't remember it being quite like that, so it would be okay. very interesting to see. Yeah. Well, let me, uh, I'll try and get that lined up here. Give me just a second. I... Sure, take your time. Or you can post it later on in one of the discussion yeah. forums, too. Okay. All right. That's great. Do you have any questions for Justin or me? Or anybody else who's here in the, in the, in the Hangout? Well, I'm not sure this is an appropriate place for it. I'm, I'm the agnostic <laughs> of the group, and so... You know, I have. Uh, I, I was a little bit disappointed in the first uh, the presentation of the mathematical proofs of evolution. Mm. Uh, I think the mathematical questions would be in a different area. Uh, both of the proofs that you gave were um, really did not touch on DNA changes. They were more the environment. And obviously, once you get something changed, well, then it's going to do better if it's better uh, fitted for an environment. No. So, um, the mathematics to me is how, well, you know, what are the and you've gotten into that some in this latest courses about the probabilities of yeah. of um, of mutations and you know of those being useful and surviving mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that that would be, I think, a, a more challenging area to take mathematics and prove evolution to be uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. No? Absolutely. Well, so the lectures coming up, not. Not this coming week, but the following week is when we start getting into population genetics. And yeah. following that, we'll start looking at sort of the mathematics behind natural selection and things like that. So I think we might hit on several of the things we're well, talking uh, about in those lectures. In there and, and again, uh, complimenting on it. I'm also actually signed up for the uh, experimental gen genetics uh, oh, yeah, the the course one. on Coursera. <laughs> uh, quite a bit harder. Yeah, that's a little more so research. But there is. Uh, you know, there is some some uh, interchange between the two. They both kind of help each other. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I'm actually okay. signed up for that one too, but I have to admit I haven't been particularly active watching because I've been so busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Stephen. Let's move on to Susan. Hi. Um, I'm living in Birmingham, Alabama right now. I just graduated in June. And oh, so congratulations. congratulations. I went to Savannah College of Art and Design. I have no science okay. background. Science was optional at my school, and I opted oh, out of it. Um, <laughs> but I'm completing a fellowship now in book publishing. So, well, I actually have one of the books. Well, I don't want to mess up my computer. Never mind. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I just, like, I'm having fun with the class because I've kind of had, like, a negative interest in science over the past like in high school you could take two and a half years of science minimum and so I took two and a half years like I stopped <laughs> <laughs> like halfway through my junior year and it's been really fun to like you know like the, the week three test or week two the first week that was like a real test I got a hundred percent and I was so excited I emailed all my friends and none of them responded <laughs> <laughs> like who cares <laughs> but yeah the, like um I forgot um, I forgot her name. The one in England, she was saying the workload's probably harder for people who don't. Yeah, the workload's kind of hard for me. It's Sarah. Like, yeah, Sarah. Sarah. Like whatever the hours are, it's usually about double because I pause it a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess you know, I'm from an English background, so I have like a closed reading, which is like where you like look at every single word and try to figure out what it means. I kind of do that with the lectures. I'm like, do I know what this word means? Do I know what this word means? And then it helps me understand it. But it's I do exactly the same yeah. thing. That's why it usually takes me about you know an hour or two to actually get from one because I keep pausing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I don't particularly talk slowly either. I know. No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It, it's really rewarding to have a class that's hard for you that you can do well if you like put the effort. Yeah. 
Well, I know what you're saying though in terms of the um, science classes too. Because uh, so my kids have gone to the public schools here in, in where we are, and I mean the science that's covered there is is so much just rote memorization that that they often come out saying like, well, I don't like that. That was terrible. And I keep saying no, that's not science. Science isn't just about having a bunch of terms. That's foreign language. <laughs> it's not supposed to be just terms. It's supposed to have this you know this process and elegant beauty, but the the way it's very often presented doesn't include any of that, so it's very unfortunate. Uh, do you have any, any thoughts uh, or questions for Justin or me? I guess my question is, um, I, I think this was asked on the forum, but I know that you keep mentioning a lab, and I guess a lot of us wonder what the difference is between us and a world class, and I'm kind of wondering what a lab would be for this class, like what do you guys actually ah, do? That's a good question. Let me see if Julie can come over here. Hey, Julie, can you come here for a sec? So Julie's actually, Julie's my wife, she's actually in charge of the lab sections for the Duke class, so she could actually answer this question significantly better than I can. <laughs> oh, can I say that my family is all from North Carolina and like right? cannot believe that I'm taking, because they went to North Carolina, and they're like, you're taking a class from Duke, why would you do that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm in the rivalry with UNC. You know, I'm going to pass it over to Jennifer just a second to answer your question, can, Susan. Can, uh, while you make that switch over, I have the link, and, the, and forgive me for not having the person's name because uh, the person that is uh, still living is James Watson. Yes. The organization is Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Harbor Laboratory. Oh, yes. And the link to yes. the course, um, I mean, I call it a course, it's 75 experiments in genetics that made modern genetics, and the link is DNA FTB. DNAFTB.org. Okay. That's and great. Um, that that's really a way to get in and really appreciate all the work the scientists have done and how you know what we're doing right now is how they really you know opened the 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 pathway, you know, very creatively to know more about genetics. Great. Thanks yeah, for that, Stephen. Too, so I can hear too. <laughs> well, she had the headphones. So hey Susan guys, was asking. I would love to keep Hanging out with you, but my kids are turning into Cookie Monster. Oh, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and eject you then. Thank you for coming, Ariane. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. So uh, Susan was just asking what the uh, difference is with the um, the labs. Like, basically, what do you do in the labs? All right. So we've tried very hard to make lab activities that reinforce lecture content. So we take a concept from lecture that's something that's a little hard to understand when you just hear somebody talk about it that's a lot easier to understand if you do something with it so whether it's I yeah I was getting there <laughs> uh, so uh, let's see what are we doing in lab this coming week uh, all right so uh, this coming week we're starting talking about molecular evolution in class uh, which is what what changes can we see actually sort of at the molecular level in the DNA um, that can tell us about what's happened in the past? Um, and so last week the students actually looked at DNA sequences from uh, two different fruit fly species, and um, each each pair of students got five different genes. They all had different genes, because there's lots of genes in the species. And they looked at the sequence and ran it through a program. I think you, you'll talk about McDonald Kreitman yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. Week okay. seven or something like that. So... Or week eight, maybe even. Actually, it's week eight. <laughs> three, four weeks from now, you'll find out about the <laughs> test <laughs> that the students ran on these genes to find out if there was evidence in the sequences to, that would suggest that natural selection has been acting on these genes um, between the two species. Uh, this coming week, still in fruit flies, but a different species, they put populations of fruit flies together. Uh, let's see, we're in the eight weeks ago. They put populations of fruit flies together. We're now four generations down the road. And the original populations had all had white eyes, and one red-eyed male was added into that population. Now we're going to get to see four generations later whether that red-eyed trait has spread, and then we get to squish a bunch of flies <laughs> and extract their DNA and actually look for a molecular signature in the DNA that is associated with, assuming we see a spread in the phenotype, which we're going to. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, this is the lab that we designed together actually ahead of time. It's, it, it's um, pretty consistent, the result. <laughs> and so the red eyes will have spread, but then... Natural can, selection in action. And so you can see a signature of reduced variation in the region around where the eye color gene is um, because of that increase in... Um, increase in, in that allele in the population. So those are a couple examples of what we do in lab. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Let, me, let me get my, uh, my daughter just to say hi real quick, too. She's the, the, the kid you guys haven't seen. You actually saw my what is, son. What percentage of the grade in the Duke course is, is lab? Daughter. Oh, in the Duke oh, course? Hi. Julie, what, what fraction hi. of the grade is, uh, is uh, <laughs> the lab? Yeah, she slipped out. It's oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Something like 30, right? 30 to 35. Yeah, somewhere around 30 or 35 percent of the okay. group. So that's what we're missing. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have, so we have somebody who joined a minute ago. Where Did we lose her? Yes, a line popped oh. in and then popped out again. Oh, no, that's too bad. Oh, okay. Is Julie's Adam up to, or is he still... Or is, okay, he's coming down, too. You, actually, you all have actually seen Adam before. You may not have known who he was. He may look familiar, though. Come here, Adam. This is my son, Adam. Does he look familiar? Hey, yeah. Hey, hi, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, I am. You can't hear me because I've got the headphones on. <laughs> but he was the one who was carrying the, the pipetter there in that very first video with the purple gloves and the white jacket. That was him. I didn't have to pay him too much to do it, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs> so do you guys have any, any advice on moving forward for the class? Any of y'all? Um, well, I have a question. I have a sure. question. Um, regarding actually the, well, since I'm a student, um, I'm very particularly um, interested in the certification after the course. Okay. So, I mean, how would it look like? I mean, how would the, I mean, how would the certif, what would the certificate certify? Like only Good the question. completion or would it also like show the, the kind, I mean, the grades, how much, how much coursework you followed or something like that? Great question. So, Justin, you, may, you have to correct me on this, but my recollection is basically you just get a PDF and it says that, you know, this certifies a successful completion of the course. It does not specify anything about your grade. However, you only get the certificate if you score above some pre-specified amount in the course. I think we set it initially for 80%, but we'll revisit that depending on you know, what fraction of people get that. If it ends up being a really small fraction, we might, we might adjust that. <laughs> Okay. But it basically just says that, though it does have some disclaimers like we cannot uh, guarantee that the person whose name is on the certificate is also the person who actually completed the class since it is an online class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's a little bit, little bit funny there. So we have uh, Aline Duran in here now, too. Can, can you introduce yourself real quick? Oh, hi. My name is Aline, not Aline. Oh, I'm sorry. Aline. Yes, yeah, I don't know. No, Aline. Aline. Okay. So where are you from? So uh, I'm from El Salvador. Oh, neat. So, yeah. And what's your what's your background? My background is I'm still in high school. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's pretty funny because um I study in a Catholic school mm -hmm. and we never see evolution or genetics. Oh so, wow. Uh, it's wow. been quite hard for me, but I'm really trying. Great, great. That's Do you have wonderful. Any do you have any uh, advice or questions for us for the class? Oh, uh, questions? I don't know. What's uh, <laughs> everyone doing? I mean, is it just hard for me or is it hard for everyone? Oh, that's a good question for the rest of you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the impression I've gotten looking at the discussion forums is a lot of people are. are they find it challenging, definitely going through the, the, you know, you can't just watch it and then just answer it and get it all right. <laughs> it's definitely taken a lot of, uh, a lot of significant going back, watch it again, think about it, look up some things online, and then, and then get it from that, so. I know, I, I bought this notebook, uh, I'm sorry, Papa, pity me. <laughs> it's my dad. Um, I bought this notebook and everything you say I write it on Spanish and I write it in English and Spanish if I don't know the word I made it up in Spanish. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> appreciate your effort. Do you have the subtitles file too? Does that come out in Spanish or does that only come in English? Yeah, I, I never see if it has subtitles but I, I try. It's not very hard because okay. some of the words are sound a lot in English than Spanish. For example, 
Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those science words are Latin based, and so they kind of have a lot of uh, a lot of things in common. Yeah. Yeah, and in school once, uh, the the teacher had to explain us about evolution, and she said the typical answer of everything. She said, "I don't know why they say we come from monkeys." And I was like, oh dear. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so bad. Yeah. No, so I took, when I was in high school, I took an, uh, an AP class. Those are the advanced placement classes that actually can potentially give you college credit here. And I remember yeah. the teacher for it who actually had a PhD. I remember he, he basically just gave one sentence about evolution the entire year. And it was something like, well, there's people who say there's evolution. There's people who say that, that there's not. It follows this other pattern. Probably the truth is somewhere in the middle. <laughs> that's all he said. Like, what? This is AP biology? <laughs> yeah. I got one sentence, Ouch. too, in high school. Was yeah, like, what was the sentence for you? It was like, well, this is a controversial topic, so we're not going to talk about it. But if you want to research it, I'm sure you can go to the library or something. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. How that's helpful. The most, <laughs> very helpful. Exactly. That's, the most, that's the most rarest place we use here. So. Yeah, I, I was 15. I wasn't going to go to the library, you know, to like <laughs> read. <laughs> uh, I think beat be, be any age, I think library is the most rarest place we use in the college. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's funny because there's so many people who are just afraid. I know, I know several teachers, and they're, they're a lot of people are just afraid to touch it. They just because they say if I touch it, then school board members will come down, parents will come down, the students will come down, the principals will come down. Yeah, you know, they're afraid to do it. I mean, I don't know how true that is because I know several of you are not in the U.S., so maybe you have a different perspective. Yes, because uh, I don't think there's a lot of restrictions for uh, studies on evolutions here. I think mm -hmm. I had these chapters. Uh, yes, of course. So I think I, I had an introduction to these in 10th grade, I think. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's around uh, uh, almost six years back. So mm -hmm. I don't think uh, there's any restriction about this. And I, I was uh, even surprised to hear that there's a lot of uh, restriction even to talk about it in some part of the world. Yeah. So, Actually, um, I transferred to SCAD. Before that, I spent a year at a Christian college in California. And in my world civilization class, we had a textbook that said, you know, like, a hundred million years ago, such and such happened. And they returned the textbook in the middle of the class. So we didn't have a textbook. And it was just like, <laughs> because like we couldn't use oh, that one, right? Because it was wrong. Because it didn't oh, say we were 6,000 years old. Oh, no. <laughs> so we just had no oh, textbook. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What's it like in the Philippines? There are a couple of you from there. The well, um, well, evolution, I, actually, I've already taken some, well, when I was in high school, I've taken some courses of evolution, and pretty much they always, they're not very, they're very open about the topic that being controversial, mm -hmm. but they, my teacher, I remember him telling me that, Remember, I am not telling you that we humans come from the monkeys. <laughs> evolution, like, I, like that I remember that, like, that. That's the first statement when he was talking about evolution. Like yeah. before, like delving into the, any detail. Yeah, any detail. Like we, he would first tell. He told us, like, okay, I want to tell you now that evolution takes. It's a gradual change over time, and <laughs> I think because of that, I learned that. I mean. It is. It is. I mean, in the Philippines, it's not very. Um, it's not a, a highly controversial topic, although mm -hmm. it may be. Mm -hmm. But in my, I don't know. In my background, I did not have any problems like learning evolution, the issues around surrounding it, and for me, it's okay. Mm -hmm. How about in Poland, Sarah? Um, well, when I went to high school, that was um, quite over ten years ago, um, and I remember vividly learning about genetics but very, very little um, about evolution. Mm -hmm. Probably mostly anthropology and, and Lucy and, and so on. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, what I usually found really strange and really found it strange, especially after reading Jerry Coyne's book, um, is how can you teach one without the other? Yeah, yeah, um, they're very, so very well tied. quite confusing <laughs> at the moment. But, um, I mean, I, I don't know how it is right now. I, I presume it is taught, uh, but I, I don't think it's taught really, you know, with much depth to it. It's quite um, mm -hmm. generic. Mm -hmm. That's understandable. That's understandable. All right. Well, do any of you guys have any other feedback on the class in general or, or genetics in general or anything? 
Um, I think you're doing a wonderful uh, job. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. And my son, who's in seventh grade, loves it too. He absolutely does. Oh, well, thanks. I'm glad. <laughs> My daughter actually just slipped in briefly. Was actually actually it's funny. Both my daughter and my mom are enrolled. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. What does your mom think? <laughs> my mom lives in Virginia, but she she oh what does she think of it? I mean, I think yeah. she watches just to see me. I don't think it has anything to do with that material at all. <laughs> for for Alina for Alina, I have a link to a glossary in Spanish. Uh, oh, cool. It's actually by genome.gov, so it should be easy to remember, genome.gov, oh, yeah. and then glossary with a capital S at the end of it, slash, genome.gov, slash, glossary, capital S, slash. Uh, I believe that's U.S. government, but it's very helpful, has some drawings, so it's a, in Span it's in English and in Spanish, and has drawings and explanations, a little more than just a dictionary, so that's helpful, oh, might be true. helpful. That's great. Thank you, Lord. That that same link is also in the general resources for week one. Oh, okay. yeah, but if you've invented more interesting words for some of those terms, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, professor, you know, sure. I think you're, you're the only teacher, well, the best teacher I ever had, Aww. even if uh, I took it specifically. But seriously, uh, I really don't like any of my teachers in school. And <laughs> <laughs> That's strong. <laughs> you do remember that this is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Alina. That's very kind of you. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> you very we should tag that Alina hates her teachers. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that to her. No, <laughs> I, I want her to watch that. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It helps to have such engaged people like all of you participating in the class. <laughs> yeah. What, very much. What level is this class oh. at, at Duke? Pardon me? What level is this class at what Duke? What level? Yeah. So that's, that's a great question. So actually, it's it's not quite as diverse as the group that, that we have taking it from here, but it's a pretty diverse group uh, class in Duke. It, it's introductory level, so it used to be called 102. There is a 101, but the 101 is not a prerequisite for it. They're just two in, independent introductory classes. One is molecular biology, ours was the genetics and evolution. There's no prerequisite, so some people are coming in literally not having had any biology maybe since middle school, whereas others have had you know middle school biology, high school biology, advanced placement biology, and maybe had a freshman seminar related to it. So some of them come in saying, oh my gosh, get going. <laughs> whereas, whereas others are, are completely lost because you know, they're like, okay, DNA, what is that again? <laughs> so there's a, a pretty big diversity on the class there. What I tell people there too is that you know, I understand there's going to be some variance in levels. Please you know, be patient in the beginning and, and let other people sort of catch up. But yeah, it's, it's basically, there's no expectation of any, uh, any particular biology beforehand. Um, one thing I wanted to say is, one thing I find helpful is like when we pause and are like, hey, okay, try this. Like, I remember with the pundit squares, it was like, it actually had a thing and I like copied it into Photoshop and filled it out. And I mean, I don't know if everyone's that crazy, but just when we pause in the videos a little bit to actually be like, let's think about this, I feel like that's so helpful with a class like this because you could just stream the video and not like stop to think unless you're like yeah. prompted to stop to think. So yeah. just like advice. Yeah, that's definitely something that Justin can give for us, but that's something that we've gotten a lot of feedback from is that they really like the uh, in-video quizzes and things like that. So it's definitely something we'd like to try to you know, potentially incorporate more of for future iterations. Yeah. I like well, that was... coming. Yeah, when you're watching the video, you can see the little green line that shows you it's about to happen, so that's always my cue to pause the video and work everything out on paper and then see if I got it right by the time you answer the question. Excellent. Very helpful. Well, I was wondering how much similar is it, um, I mean, to the actual Duke class? I mean, how much similar is the course and mm -hmm. the amount of time invested in each of the courses? I Great mean, question. Comparing it with the actual, te actual mm -hmm. class in Duke, I mean, mm -hmm. how, much dif how much is it similar or how much different? The, the lectures are basically identical. I mean, the ones, so what happened when we started this whole process, so I got asked to do this back in May. Um, I had already made these lectures for the Duke class. I'd already delivered them once before there. Uh, what we did then is, is ju uh, Justin and I, meaning primarily Justin, <laughs> went, through, <laughs> went through the slides and just replaced the images with uh, ones that we're allowed to use freely online because a lot of the images we used within the classroom were ones that we 
either didn't have rights on or had rights just for a very limited audience for it. But showing it online, we have to get better rights for that. But the, the content, I mean, basically, you, you saw just about, I mean, I think I cut out maybe 10 minutes off each one or something like that, but it's pretty close to exactly oh, no. the same lecture material, if that. <laughs> Mohammed? Yeah? <laughs> I think we. Lo I don't know about everybody else, but I couldn't hear that last uh, sentence or so. That you oh, I'm sorry. Speaking. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll repeat that again. I said um, the the content is basically identical. The only difference being that maybe like ten minutes or so of material every now and then was chopped out, just so you know, just to make it you know more either more current or take out more something that I thought was. Couldn't be elaborated as easily in an online format. But basically, it's the same lecture material. The difference with the online class is that. You know, the parts where you're doing the um, in-video quizzes, we actually do them as polls in the class. And people in the class will then vote, and we'll have a little bit more discussion in the classroom then because everybody's, you know, physically there. And then the biggest difference, of course, being the, um, the lab sections, which, of course, you know, they're not part of uh, this class at all. But largely, I mean, you're getting, you're getting a lot of what the Duke students are getting, aside from the personal interactions, the, the discussions among the students and, and with the TAs and myself and the labs. Besides that, it's, it's very, very close. Well, cool. And, and as uh, Mohammed mentioned earlier, for his next version of the class on campus, he's yeah. basically sending them to Coursera to watch the videos instead of doing the lectures in class so that then he can have... <laughs> But then you can discuss the material and discuss particular problems in class more in depth than he could have before exactly. when he was giving the lecture at the same time. Exactly. So now the class the class is going to be completely different in the spring now for the Duke students because, like, like Justin said, they're going to watch it online. So in the class, what I, what I do is, is spend most of it answering questions and doing practice problems. And maybe have a couple of quick slides of here are some really recent results that just came out in the last month or so. So... Do they have so the same textbook? Next semester we'll see some Duke students, huh? That's right. You'll see some Duke students. They do actually have the same, the recommended textbooks that you guys had, the Griffiths et al., the Freeman and Heron, and the Coin Book. Those were the same three that were assigned last semester in the, uh, for the Duke class as well. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, cool. Exactly. I have a question that actually has to do with the material. Sure. Uh, when we do the charts and we see, you know, 50% of this and 25% of that, um, that that is no guarantee that if you had exactly four kids, they would be exactly like the chart, right? That that is absolutely if, correct. If, yeah, if you had enough kids, then it would follow those statistics, no? That's exactly correct. It's the same with principles like when you flip a coin. You can flip a coin twice and get two heads. Right. It's the same sort of thing. So yeah, absolutely. That, those are the expectations with large numbers or probabilities rather than uh -huh. exactly. Yeah, you don't want kids with two heads, do you? That, what was that, Richard? Sorry, I missed that. So you don't want any kids with two heads. That's right. Exactly. No, I kids with two heads. Definitely not. <laughs> and on a humor, on a humorous note, I guess we're the, um, and, and the name just is, the Drusella fruit flies of the online course. To not say guinea pigs. Drusella. Drusella. Yeah. Drusella. Yeah. I appreciate you guys contributing. That's <laughs> yeah. been a great learning experience for me, I know, for sure. Just, uh, just seeing like what it is people are picking up versus not picking up, so I've been trying to adjust it. And, you know, a couple of people pointed out some you know links to papers I hadn't seen and things like that. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I need to go look that up and maybe work it into a work it into the lecture in the future or something like that. Yeah, you don't often get thousands of proofreaders and eyes on your <laughs> material. <laughs> But I assume that we are safe from being squished at the end of the course and our DNA extracted? No, no your DNA is, will stay intact in you. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go ahead and uh, uh, close this out. But thank you all very much for... Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Thank, thank you very much, Rob, so much. It was a pleasure meeting you all. And take care. If you have any uh, other insights about the class, please post something in the forums, and we'll, we'll be sure to see it and see what we can do. Really. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Sleep, you guys, in Europe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I should go on. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good, night. Good, night. Good morning, everyone. <laughs>